So Jesus is teaching in all these parables about all these different things. We're talking about them today, but there's a section at the end where he goes to his hometown and he's doing mighty works, but he couldn't do many there because they didn't believe in him. They had unbelief. And so we're going to talk about that today. What is it that God is doing or not doing in response to our faith or our lack of faith? So come and read with me. Welcome to Bible Time. Thanks for joining today. Hey, if you joined yesterday, um, I hope that you got something out of that reading on your own. Um, And I hope that uh, the Lord spoke to you. And I hope that maybe you've employed some of the tools that you've learned along the way. If that was your first video, then uh, this one will be a little different. Usually I highlight and underline and read along. And that's what I want to do right today. I just want to jump right into Matthew 13, starting verse 24. If you have a Bible, go ahead and grab that and a pen. If not, you're going to see it on your screen and hear it right there. And uh, just remember that we are reading today God's Word, His living Word, for the primary purpose of growing in relationship with Him and obedience to Him. So, this is what Jesus says. Uh, He put another parable before them, saying, The kingdom of heaven may be compared to a man who sowed good seed in a field. But, while his men were sleeping... The enemy came and sowed weeds among the wheat and went away. So when the plants had come up and bore grain, then the weeds appeared also. And the servants of the master of the house came and said to him, Master, did you not sow good seed in your field? How then does it have weeds? He said to them, An enemy has done this. So the servants said to him, Then do you want us to go and gather them? But he said, No, lest in gathering the weeds you root up the wheat along with them. Let both grow together until the harvest, and at harvest time I will tell the reapers, Gather the weeds first, bind them in bundles to be burned, uh, but gather the wheat into my barn. This is an interesting one um, for a few reasons. I think generally it seems that this passage is talking about people and whether or not like you as a person is growing up as a good, you know, good whatever, good plant, (laughs) wheat, I guess in this case, or whether you as a person is growing up as a weed and um but he was just talking about seed being sown as in the word of god and it seemed like the analogy was more like the word being sown into one person so is this talking about the word the word and evil being sown into one person and in you the the things that grow at the end the lord is going to cut out all of the bad and burn it or is it talking about generally speaking people are growing up in god's kingdom as well as um you know believing people, following people, good people, as well as evil, disbelieving, unfollowing people. And at the end of the age, is it referring to this analogy of bundling up those weeds and and throwing them away and bringing in the good wheat or the believers into his barn, as it were, or his kingdom or his house. So, I don't know. It's talking about the kingdom of heaven, he says... So maybe a little different than the parable of the sower. I don't know. It is interesting though, isn't it? It's 
like, what is he trying to speak to us? What's the... You know, the way that I like to read the Bible for devotions is... Um, just to imagine, like, okay, if Jesus is sitting right here across the table from me, and I'm... We're having coffee together. Let's say we're having coffee together, and... I'm reading the Bible and he's not because he wouldn't need to but I'm reading this and I look across to him and I'm like hey like what do you want me to get from this um, what you know you're if, if Jesus was right there in front of you right now what do you think he would want to say to your heart from this passage and I don't know this is kind of a tough one I mean, there was a reason that he wanted this included. There's a reason that he spoke this. There's a reason that he pointed out that he wouldn't have the farmers go in and tear them up, but that he would do that later on. So, I don't know. Maybe, uh, think about that. <laughs> Let's move on. He put another parable before them, saying, The kingdom of heaven is like a grain of mustard seed that a man took and sowed in a field. This is a really small seed. Sorry, bug. This is a really small seed. Um, oh, it is the smallest of all seeds. But when it has grown, it is larger than all the garden plants and becomes a tree. So that the birds of the air may come and make nest in, nests in its branches. He told them another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like leaven that a woman took and hid in three measures of flour till it was all leavened. Hmm. Seems like both of these passages are like... Maybe little things that grow and make a big difference. That the kingdom of God is like a this little can start little, but it produces uh, massive change and results if it's working the way that it should. All these things Jesus said to the crowds in parables. Indeed, he said nothing to them without a parable. That's interesting. This was to fulfill what was spoken of him by the prophet. I will open my mouth in parables. I will utter what has been hidden since the foundation of the world. Then he left the crowds and went into the house, and his disciples came to him, saying, Explain to us the parable of the weeds in the field. He answered, the one who sows, oh, good, it's showing us exactly what he meant. So, the one who sows, uh, the good seed is the son of man. That's Jesus himself. That's a term that he refers to himself as often, especially in this gospel. The field is the world. Okay, so, it's not talking about an individual. And the good seed is the sons of the kingdom. Okay. So it's the second meaning. It's basically the good, the good, the, the good wheat are our believers, sons of the kingdom, people that belong to the kingdom of God, and the weeds are the sons of the evil one. Okay, so here's our distinctions. And the enemy who has sown them is the devil. The harvest is the end of the age, and the reapers are angels. Just as the weeds are gathered and burned with fire so will it be at the end of the age the son of man will send his angels and they will gather out of his kingdom all causes of sin and all lawbreakers and throw them into the fiery furnace wow
In that place there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Then the righteous will shine like the sun in the kingdom of their father. He who has ears, let him hear. Pretty clear, it seems. The kingdom of heaven is like treasure hidden in a field, which a man found and covered up. Then in his joy, he goes and sells all that he has and buys that field. I love this, that it is in his joy that he would go and sell everything that he has in order to buy that field. If the kingdom of God is really that good and really worth it, isn't it worth selling everything that we have in order to go and buy that field? And that's what, according to Jesus, he's saying it is. And so, hey, what's the practical here for us, for you and I? Very simple. Do you truly believe that the kingdom of God is, is worth it for you to sell everything that you have in order to inherit that? And the, the amazing thing about this whole thing is we, we can't buy it. We can't earn it. We can't. It's offered to us free. But there is, in a sense, a selling of other things in order to inherit it. It's, it's given by grace, it's received by faith, but we do have to sell the old life in order to position ourselves in a place that we can receive it. You just can't hold on to both at the same time. And so, have you deemed the kingdom of God worthy that if there's anything else from the world that you're still holding on to or that it comes in front of the kingdom that you're willing to sell? get rid of burn here's another one again the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant in search of fine pearls who on finding one pearl of great value went and sold all that he had and bought it again another message about selling everything and buying the kingdom Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a net that was thrown into the sea and gathered fish of every kind. When it was full, men drew it ashore and sat down and sorted the good into containers but threw away the bad. So it will be at the end of the age. The angels will come out and separate evil from the righteous and throw them into the fiery furnace. In that place there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Have you understood all these things? They said to him, yes. And he said to them, therefore every scribe who has been trained for the kingdom of heaven is like a master of the house who brings out of his treasure what is new and what is old. Hmm. All right, let's finish this last one here in this chapter. And when Jesus had finished these parables, he went away from there, and coming into his own, coming into his hometown, he taught them in their synagogue. So they were astonished, and they said, Where did this man get this wisdom and these mighty works? So he was teaching, they were astonished, and he was also doing mighty works. And then they're talking about his identity. Isn't this the carpenter's son? And his mother is Mary? And his brother are James and Joseph and Simon and Judas? Okay. I think earlier, like a couple videos ago, I, uh, when he said, these are my brothers and my mother, whoever does the will of my father. I was like, I don't really know all of who his brothers were. Here they were, James, Joseph, Simon, and Judas. And I believe this James is the one who wrote the book of James. Apparently he had sisters too, and are not all his sisters with us? Where then did this man get these things? And then watch this response. They took offense at him. He became a stumbling block to them. And Jesus said to them, A prophet is not without honor except in his hometown and in his own household. 
and then check this out. He did not do many mighty works there. Why? Because of their unbelief. challenging section to end on. I think uh, all of the par parables above are, are good things to chew on and resonate on and consider. Um, as for me, this last section is a challenging one and probably the one that I'm, I'm kind of focused on. And um, if you have something different from the reading today, that's totally cool. That's the beauty of the Bible is we can all read one verse or one paragraph or a chapter or whatever and and god is speaking to us all maybe different things and that's that's a good thing so if you're thinking uh praying through something else then that's awesome um go and do that spend time with the holy spirit and i'll, I'll plan on seeing you tomorrow as for me um i'm just thinking about this you know his own hometown It's true, it's like sometimes the people that are closest to you, they can't recognize the gifting in you. And that's for us, and obviously for Jesus. But even apart from that, it's just this this constant like situation that happens in the scriptures where some people have faith and they trust him and he's amazed by it, and some people just don't and um, you know I'm not like a name it and claim it prosperity gospel just faith believe whatever you want you know give me a Lamborghini because I'm believing I just don't think that that's biblical but at the same time Almost every time that Jesus did something, a healing or a miracle, he referenced the person's faith. And the times that he can't do anything, he did not do many mighty works there, specifically mentioning their unbelief. So, as for me, I want to grow in my faith and I want to honor God and I want to see him move. And so, it's a challenge to trust him, really trust him and midst of anything that might feel in the moment contrary to believing him uh, we got to choose to trust him and continue to grow in that and we, we we do grow in that as we grow in our relationship with him and spending time in prayer and hearing his voice and all of those things so anyway that's what i'm focused on today and i hope that god has that or something else for you and that you uh, spend some time in prayer towards whatever it is the holy spirit speaking to you so I'll plan on seeing you again tomorrow. God bless.